All praise to the most high. So tonight's topic is called conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theory. All praise to the most high. Let's open up with the book of Second Kings. Let's just get to it. Uh, you know what? Give me Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 5. I think I want to start with that. Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 5. Let's start right there. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10, verse 5. There is conspiracy theories. The Bible talks about that thing. Okay, Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 5. Let's read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 5. Go ahead. The nations in their wicked conspiracy. In their in, what? In their wicked conspiracy. He says, moreover, the nations, meaning the heathens, the heathens in their wicked conspiracy. Go ahead. In their wicked conspiracy, being confounded. They are going to be confounded. Their wicked conspiracy is going to confound them. That said the Lord. Go ahead. She found out the righteous. Mm -hmm. That's wisdom. And the she, the she is wisdom that found out the righteous. Read on. And preserved him blameless unto God. Mm -hmm. And kept him strong against his tender compassion toward his son. So this goes into our forefather Abel. But... This also, this when the righteous is talking about evil, which also goes into the 12 tribes of Israel. But what I want to show you here is that the nations, they always have these wicked conspiracies against us. You understand? To destroy us or to stop us from doing the work. You understand? And you have our people that are heathen-minded. Heathen-minded Israelites. Or You understand? Watch this. Let's go to 2 Kings, okay? 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 27. Let's start with that. 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 27. Let's start right there. Second Kings chapter 15, verse 27. Go ahead. In the two and fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, began to reign over Israel in Samaria and reigned and reigned 20 years. So now you've got Azariah, who was, the, who was the king of Judah. Then you've got Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, in Israel, in Samaria. You understand? And he reigned 20 years. Now watch this. Now let's deal with Pekah. Who's Pekah? Give me, we know he's the son of Ramaliah. Okay, give me 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 1. Second Kings chapter 16, verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 1. Mm -hmm. In the 17th year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jotam, king of Judah, began to reign. So now you have Pekah in the 17th year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah in Samaria. You had Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, he began to reign, right? Let's deal with Ahaz. Now we know who Pekah is, was the king in Israel, northern kingdom. Now you've got Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the king of Judah. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Kings 15, verse 32. Let's deal with uh, Pekah. We're going to deal with uh, Ahaz, just for a second. 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 32. 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 32. Go ahead. In the second year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, began to began Jotam, the son of Uzi. The son of Uziah. The son of Uzziah. The son of Uzziah. Read that again, verse 32. 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 32. Go ahead. In the second year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, began Jotam, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, to reign. So now in the second year of Pekah, the second year of Pekah, you've got Jotham. Jotham is the father of Ahaz. Okay, Ahaz began to reign in the 17th year of Pekah. You understand? So, but here we are reading about his father. His father, he began to reign in the second year of Pekah's reign in Israel. Northern Kingdom. Read verse 32 again. Second Kings chapter 15, verse 32. Mm -hmm. 
in the second year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, be began Jotham, the son of Uziah, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah to reign. Read on. Five and twenty years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. The daughter of Zadok. Go ahead. That coming out of David's lineage. Read on. No, no. That and coming he, out of Levi. This is Jerusha. He's coming out of Levi's lineage. Go ahead. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. So now Jotham was a righteous king. You understand? He was the father of Ahaz. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Okay, let's pause here. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 17. Come on. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he had commanded thee. So now the Lord is commanding us that we must keep the commandment of the Lord and his testimonies and his statutes which he commanded us, right? Go ahead. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. You see what it means to do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord? If you are saying I'm doing what is right, it means you are keeping the commandments of the Most High. You understand? So that's what the Lord is teaching us right here. So when he says he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, he was keeping God's laws. So you ever hear people say, no, I just want to do the right thing. Their right thing is not according to the laws of God. It's according to how they feel. But God is teaching us what it means to do that which is right. You keep God's laws. Let's go back. Go back to 2 Kings chapter 15. Okay. 2 Kings chapter 15 verse 34 again. 2 Kings chapter 15 verse 34. Mm -hmm. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. Read. Howbeit, the high places were not removed. The high places, the, when it says the high places were not removed, it goes into the idolatrous practices that was being practiced in both Judah and Israel at this point. You understand? But he did not remove those high places. Read on. The people sacrificed and burned incense still in the high places. He built the higher gates of the house of the Lord. That's why he built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. Read on. Now the rest, now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all that he all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? Keep going. Come on. Verse 37. No, no. In verse, those... 38. verse 38. Verse 38. Read verse 38 now. Verse 38. Mm -hmm. And Jotham slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. And Ahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. So now Ahaz is ruling now. Ahaz is the king. Jotham, his father, slept. He died. You understand? He did that which, which was right in the sight of the Lord. Ahaz, on the other hand, he did not do that which was right in the sight of the Lord. You understand? Watch this. Now, go back. Go back to 2 Kings now. 2 Kings 16. Read verse 2. 2 Kings chapter 16 verse 2. Go ahead. 20 years old was Ahaz when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. And did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord his God, like David his father. Come on, he didn't, he was wicked as hell. Read on. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Yay. Yeah, and made his son to pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. Read verse 3 again. Because now we're getting an account of what Ahaz was doing. Read. Second Kings chapter 16 verse 3. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Yea, and made his son to pass through the fire. 
according to the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. So what Ahaz was doing, he was sacred, he says he made his son to pass through the fire. So he was, the abortions, the women that were performing abortions, they would take the children and go and sacrifice them to what? To the, to the, to the gods that the people that were staying in that land was doing, which was, the, which was who? The Canaanites. You understand? If you read Psalms 106 verse 34 down, it goes into that thing. Go ahead. Verse 4. And he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places mm -hmm. and on the hills and under every green tree. That's what he was doing. Give me Deuteronomy 12 verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess have served that ye, which ye shall possess serve their gods. Because the Upon nations the that we hold on, the nations that we possess during the time of Moses, during the time of Joshua, who was in the land? The Canaanites was upon the land and they were worshiping other gods. They served idols. So guess what? When, when they, these kings that was ruling, Ahaz and them, when they was ruling, they went back to the, to, the, to the evils of the nations that we found in the land of Canaan that we had to kick out. They started to continue to follow in that. You understand? And that's what you are seeing today. What you are seeing today with the level of the, the amount of abortions, the amount of babies that are aborted by the black women. Listen to me. What you are seeing here, what we're reading here, that's exactly what they were doing. Because where did they learn this stuff from? Give me Isaiah 2 verse 6. Let me just digress for a second. Because this is a, this is a very sensitive topic. Nobody wants to talk about it. Listen, we're going to talk about this thing. Okay, we are tired of our sons and daughters being killed by these black women. Give me that in Isaiah 2 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 6. Go ahead. Therefore, thou hast forsaken thy people, the mm -hmm. house of Jacob, Read. because they replenished from the east. They what? Because they be replenished from the east. So the Lord is saying we are learning the stuff that we are learning. We are learning them from the east. He's going to tell you who those people, who are the people on in the east. Go ahead. And are soothsayers like the Philistines. You see that thing? It says we are soothsayers like the Philistines. So all these witchcraft that we are performing today, you understand the voodoo, you understand Mamlambo, all this garbage. Where do we learn this stuff from? Egypt. We learn this evil from Egypt. Ugloyana. We learned this stuff from Egypt. And when we came down here during the Bantu migration, we came with that garbage. Okay, come on. And our soothsayers like the Philistines, mm -hmm. and they please themselves in the children of strangers. You see that thing? The Lord is saying we are pleasing ourselves in the children of strangers because the children of strangers is talking about the other nations. You understand? We are following their customs. Okay, now watch this. Go back to Deuteronomy 12, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 2 again. Hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 2. Go ahead. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places mm -hmm. wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods Wait. upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. Now, you see, we were, we were worshipping and sacrificing to these idols and bowing down to them during the time of these kings. But I just want to deal with something. Go back to 2 Kings real quick. 2 Kings chapter 16. I just want to deal some more with what Ahaz was doing. 2 Kings 16 verse 3. Read that for me. 2 Kings chapter 16 verse 3. Go ahead. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Mm -hmm. Yea. And made his sons to pass through the fire. Come and on. And made his son pass through the fire according to the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. Now, watch this. Now, let's deal with, give me the book of Ezekiel 23, verse 37. Ezekiel 23, verse 37. Let's read that. Read that for me. Ezekiel chapter 23. Verse 37. Go ahead. 
that they have committed adultery. They've done what? That they have committed adultery. They have committed adultery. That's the first sin right there. The seventh commandment is broken right here. They have committed adultery. Go ahead. And blood is in their hands. And blood is the blood of their sons is in their hands. He's going to explain it. Go ahead. And with their idols have mm. they committed adultery. Read. And have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass them, to pass for them through the fire, to devour them. So now there's three things going on here. There's adultery. You understand? The cause of these abortions is adultery. That is the main cause of, of abortion. Because I'm going to read some articles. Yeah, I'm digressing, but I need to deal with this. Okay, it says blood is in their hands with their idols. So you've got adultery. You've got idolatry. You understand? It says what? And of course, also their sons whom they bear unto me to pass for them through the fire to devour them. Abortions. Because they're sacrificing these sons to these idols of the Canaanites, the Hamites that are surrounding us. Jump down to verse 39 now. Verse 39. You know what? No, no, keep reading. Next verse. Verse 38. Mm -hmm. Moreover, this they have done unto me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbaths. You see what he's saying? It says they what? It says they've defiled my sanctuary, that's, that's the Christian church, in the same day, meaning the same day after they commit the abortions, they go to the Christian church on Sunday and say, praise why Jesus, okay? And they profane my Sabbath because they don't go to, they don't observe the Sabbath day. Today, our people, what are they doing? They're especially the same ones, the same sisters that be going to church talking about me, I love Jesus, Jesus is in my heart. Today, where are they at? They are partying. They are cooking, they are brying, they are frying, all kinds of stuff, cooking and defining the Sabbath. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 39. Mm -hmm. For when they had slain their children to their idols. You see that thing? Then, when is, hold on. For when they have slain their children to their idols, read. Then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. You see that thing? It says, after they commit the abortions, they go to church and say, praise the Lord. Go ahead. And lo, thus have they done in the midst of mine house. You see that thus have they done in the midst of mine house. Watch this now. Hmm. Read verse 45. Verse 45. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses. You see what the Lord is saying? The righteous man is us, is us now, the prophets. It says, and the righteous man, we're going to go to the streets and says, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses. Meaning, they, 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 because these abortions, they are as a result of adultery. Because in the media, they say the abortions is because of what? It's because, no, you know, they are, there's poverty, you know, there's high rates of unemployment, we are poor and all of that. That, is, that was never the reason. That's not the reason. God is telling what the reason is. It's not because there's no money. We grew up, I mean, when we grew up, we, there's a lot of children. You understand? I mean, that was like, what, seven people, seven kids that, that my mother and my father had. We was not rich. We was poor. But here we are. So that's never the reason why abortions are committed. No, no. It's because of what? Adultery and idolatry. Read that again, verse 45. Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 45. Go ahead. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses mm -hmm. and after the manner of women that shed blood. The women that shed blood, they shed innocent blood of, these, of our sons and our daughters through abortion. Go ahead. Because they are adulteresses mm -hmm. and blood is in their hands. He says, because they are adulteresses and blood is in their hands. This is what the Lord is saying right here. Watch this. Verse 48. Go ahead. Verse 48. Mm -hmm. Thus will I cause lewdness to cease out of the land. Read. That all women may be taught not to do after the lewdness. 
to do after their lewdness, meaning what? This whorish behavior. Okay, come on. And they shall recompense your lewdness upon you. Mm -hmm. And he shall bear the sins of your idols. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. The Lord says, you're going to know I'm the Lord your God. Because the Lord is bringing forth judgment. You understand? Now watch this. I'm going to go over this article because our people, they love the government. Because the government is letting them to do whatever the hell they want. Today is a new day. Watch this. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay, I'm just going on a tangent. It's a necessary tangent. I have to go over this. Okay, watch this. Could you read that, what you see on the screen? This is now abortion in South Africa. Read that. Choice on what? Choice on Termination of, Preg of Pregnancy Act, 1996, Wikipedia. So now, Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act. So this act was, was, was enacted in actually 1997, you understand? But what you are seeing is this act right here is basically license that was given to our sisters to kill. Give me that in uh, Sarah 15 verse 20. You understand? This act that was put up was created, was, was created to give our women license to kill. You understand? That's why today they call it um, legal abortion. There's no such thing as a legal abortion. Abortion is murder. It's that simple. But in the media, they say, no, it's legalized abortion. Mm -mm. So you legalize murder. That's what they are saying. Read that. Sarah 15 verse 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 15 verse 20. Come on. He hath commanded no man to do so wickedly. No, 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 no. Read that again, verse 20. Read it, read it right. Ecclesiastes chapter 15, verse 20. Read. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly. Mm -hmm. Neither hath he given any man license to sin. You see what the Lord is saying? The most High God did not give any man license to sin. We are dealing with the women now. It says he didn't give the he didn't give you women license to kill our sons and daughters through abortion. Now, but this act of 1996, which really came to pass in 97, this is license right here for our sisters, the black women, the Latino women, the Native American Indian women to kill our sons and daughters. Now, let's read the paragraph. Read that. The Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, 1996, is the law governing no, no. a post act? No, no, in parentheses, act number nine, act number 92 of 1996. Read that. The Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, 1996, act number 92 of 1996, is the law governing abortion in South Africa. So this law is how abortion is conducted in South Africa. Hmm. Watch this. Keep going. It allows abortion on demand up to the 12th week of pregnancy. Hold on. Abortion on demand. You know what that means, on demand? That means there's going to be a high demand from our sisters to commit abortion. So this law is, is creates abortion on demand. You understand? That's why you ever see when they promote videos and, and you know, DSTV be promoting things, they be saying uh, video on demand, VOD, video on demand. This law right here is abortion on demand. Like it's a product. You understand? Read. 12 week, 12, I mean, 12 week of pregnancy, up to 12 weeks of pregnancy. Hmm? 12 weeks. That's what like, that's three months, right? Keep going. Under broadly specified circumstances, from the 30th, from the 30th to the 20th from, week. No, from the 13th to the 20th week. That's six months now. That's almost six months because it's five months and a couple of a couple of days. So that's up to six months. You understand? So abortion in South Africa, up to six months, you can up, you can have an abortion. Read. From the 13th to the 20th week. And only for serious medical reasons after the 20th week. It's for serious medical reasons. You know what that is, that is called today? Because today when, when sisters are in the hospitals, they want to give birth, 
if they want to convince them not to do natural birth, you know what they say? No, the baby is not sitting right. No, the baby is too big. Hey, the baby is like this. Because why? They say, but a Caesar will do. You know what they are, they are, they are forcing Caesars now in the hospitals, even in government, especially government hospitals. Because a Caesar, it only limits you to have two babies at the most. If you have three, you are lucky. So Caesar is actually population control. That's what caesarean is. You understand? A C-section. When a woman do a C-section, basically that they are making sure that you have a minimum two kids, maximum three, if you are lucky. But the goal is two when you do a Caesar. You understand? So abortion also, it falls under that. Go ahead. The act has been described by the Gut Market Institute as one of the most liberal abortion laws in the world. Mm. So the abortion that the abortion law in South Africa it says is one of the most liberal, liberal, because that goes into democracy. I do what I want, how I feel. It's my body. Okay, what about the body? What about the life that is in your body? The child that you are killing. Do they have a say? No, of course not. Because that's your body, right? It says it's one of the most liberal abortion laws in the world. Now, let's click this. I want to go to this hyperlink right here. Now read that. Abortion in South Africa. Abortion in South Africa. Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Abortion in South Africa is legal on request in the first trimester of pregnancy mm -hmm. and in special circumstances afterwards. Keep going. Abortion was legal only under very limited circumstances until the 1st of February, 1997, when the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, Act 92 of 1996, came into force, mm -hmm. providing abortion on demand for a variety of cases. You see that thing? That's why, so in February 1997, that's when it came to pass. They forced this thing. Watch this. Now, let's go down, okay? Let's go legal position. I want you to read this part right here. Legal position. What is South Africa's legal standing on abortion? Read that. Legal position. In South Africa, a woman of any age can get an abortion on request. Stop with right no there. Reason. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's not just read past that. Read that part again. A woman of what? A woman of any age. Hold on. Can a woman? Oh, 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 a woman of any age. Any age. But today, when you read the newspapers, right, you see on the news, they are complaining about teenage pregnancy and abortion. But yet, the law, the con according to the constitution of this country, is that a woman of any age can get an abortion on request. So why are they complaining? Why are they pushing the statistics? Hey, no, you know, our, our daughters are falling pregnant, you know, at a young age, 10 years old, they are falling pregnant having abortions at 10 years old. Some of them, they are dying while they are giving birth because their bodies cannot handle a baby. They are still a baby. But the law that the, 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 the law that, by the way, this law was passed by the ANC. Don't get it twisted. This law was passed by the ANC. The same ANC that our mothers, our fathers, every election, keep on about queuing. They are queuing to vote. Hmm? The same people that are killing your daughters and sons giving your, your daughter's license to kill their babies. You see, our people, we are sick. Okay, read that again. In South Africa. In South Africa, a woman of any age can get an abortion on request mm -hmm. with no reasons given. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She... With, no, hold, with no reasons given. No, I, I, I don't feel right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I want this baby. Kill the baby. Go ahead. If she is less than 13 weeks pregnant. That's three months. Go ahead. If she is between 13 and 20 weeks pregnant. That she now, can. More than, hold on. 20 weeks, that goes into five to six months. Go ahead. She can get the abortion mm -hmm. if A, her own physical or mental health is at stake. You see that thing? Her own physical or mental health is at stake. You know what that means? That means, you know what? I'm stressed out. I don't think I'm ready for a baby. That's what this is going into. 
I'm not ready for a baby. You know, yes, in move. I still want to draw us some more. So guess what? I don't want the baby. But you were ready to lay down with that man that you didn't prove. Now you are pregnant. Now you are stressed out. No, you know what? I'm not ready. I'm going to kill the baby. That's what this is saying right here. Go ahead. Or B, the baby will have severe mental or physical abnormalities. How the hell do they know that? How does the white man, these doctors know that the baby is going to have severe mental or physical abnormalities? How do they know? How do they know? Don't tell me about some extra garbage because I've got three. So I know what I'm talking about. The hell is this? Keep going. Or C, she is, she is pregnant because of incest. She is pregnant because of incest. Even in the scriptures, when that happened, there was never, the, the reason was never, the abortion was never the reason to get rid of the baby. The baby was still taken care of. Keep going. For D, she is pregnant because of rape. Yeah, yeah, that's also never the reason because our fourth, our, 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 our sister Dina, she was raped and defiled by a Hamite. They didn't say have an abortion, so that's out. Read. Or E, she is of the personal opinion. Stop right there. That... She is, whoa, whoa, whoa. She is of the what? She is of the personal opinion. She is of the personal opinion. This is the reason number five. Meaning uh, her opinion, you know what that translates into? My feelings, how I feel, which is the same as number one. Mental health is at stake. She is of the personal opinion. Where did she get? Because the black woman has no opinion. If you take away TV, you take away social media, you take away DSTV, you take away Facebook, the black woman has no opinion. Where did she get it from? Where is she getting it from? Television and media. That's where she's getting her opinion from. And who's, who's owning the media? The white man, of course. So she does not have an opinion. Her opinion to say, I want to get rid of the baby because is because the white man has put that thought in her head. Just like uh, the white man put the thought in, in the in our foremother Eve's head in the garden. The same thing. Keep going. Or E, she is of the personal opinion that her economic or social situation is sufficient reason for the termination of pregnancy. You see that thing? So this is what she feels, that she's of the personal opinion that her economic or social situation is sufficient reason for the termination of pregnancy. And that's the reason why you see the abortion rates are so high because of these things that were put in law in the constitution of South Africa. Keep going. If she is more than 20 weeks pregnant, she can get the abortion only if her or the fetus life is in danger. No, 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 no. no. It says she can get an abortion. It says if she's more than 20 weeks, she's more than six months pregnant. It says she can get the abortion only if her or the fetus is life. Wait a minute. I thought the fetus was not alive. I thought it was just the fetus is, is, is not alive yet. But they said the fetus is alive. You see the hypocrisy of the system? The system, listen, politics is the, is, the, is the doctrine of hypocrisy. It's just like Christianity. It says she only, if her life, her or the fetus' life is in danger. But I thought, no, it's, it's, not, it's not a baby yet. It's just the fetus. Why are they saying the fetus is life here? Because the white man knows that it, listen, the minute you fall pregnant, even if on the first day you are pregnant, that's the life in there, right there. Because the egg now, the sperm has met the egg. Fertilization is taking place. Conception is taking place. So there's a life in there. But they convince our sisters to say, no, it's not a baby yet, it's just the fetus. But here they are saying the fetus is life. Why are they saying that? Keep going. Is in danger or they are likely to be serious birth defects? Likely, meaning they are just guessing. Meaning there's, it's not a fact. No, they are guessing. Okay, watch this. Hmm. Read that. A woman under the age? A woman under the age of 18 we will be advised to consult. Read that again. A woman what? 
a woman under the age of 18 will be advised to consult her parents, but she can decide not to inform or consult them if she so chooses. You see that thing? Listen, this is the government that our mothers, especially our mothers, they are voting for. It says a woman under the age of 18 will be advised to consult her parents. Do you think they're going to advise her to consult their parents? When these young girls, 10-year-olds, you understand, to 19-year-olds, go to these abortion slaughterhouses, do they ask them to consult their parents? No. It says, but she can decide not to inform or consult them if she, if she so chooses. Meaning what? She doesn't have to consult her parents. Guess what? She be uh, under the law that was set up in this country. She is well within her rights to do it. That this is what we're reading. That that's what that's the reason why you see their rates of abortion are so high in teenage pregnancy is because of stuff like this. You understand? Go ahead. A woman who is married or in a life partner relationship will be advised to consult her partner. Mm. But she cannot, but she can decide not to inform or consult him or her. Now, this is some evil stuff. Here you are, you are married. Ne? Your wife falls pregnant because that's what men and women do when that those that are married. They have sex. And when you have sex with your wife, children are but you the wife will fall pregnant. It says your wife has the right not to tell you even. So imagine the three months, in three months, you, you start to see your, your, your wife's stomach is growing because she's pregnant. She can just decide, you know what? I don't think I want to deal with a baby. She can go to the abortion slaughterhouse and kill the baby and come back home with a flat stomach. You as the husband, you have no say. This is the South Africa that our mothers, I'm getting on the mothers because they are the ones that you'll be seeing them wearing these ANC outfits, going by like voter. But no, no, kilo voter, kilo voter la ramaposa. But look at what's going on here. Hmm? The most High God never commanded us to vote for no one. It's not in the Bible for us to vote. That's not our culture. We don't do that stuff. The most High God never commanded us to vote. Because when we voted for a king, which was King Saul, guess what happened? Israel was in them some midst of wickedness. Okay, right. An exception is that if the woman is severely mentally ill or has been unconscious for a long time, mm -hmm. where consent of a life partner, parent or legal guardian is required. You, you see that thing? So, hmm, let me see if I want to go somewhere else. Give me one second. Um... Uh, let me see, let me see. Yeah, read that part when it says, in general, only medical what? In general, only medical doctors may perform about abortions. Mm -hmm. in, we see that part right there? It says, in general. You see how slick, they are very slick. They are very clever on how they put in these uh, these these laws, these bylaws that they these clauses. It says in general, only medical doctors may perform abortions. That means it's not specific. It's meaning it's, there's no strict rules or regulations that are set up to make sure that a doctor is supposed to do that. And by the way, doctor has no business doing that. You understand? Go ahead. Because it's in a general. Matter. Come on. In general, only medical doctors may perform abortions. Right. Nurses who have received special training may also perform abortions up to the 12th week of pregnancy. You see that part right there? Now, that, that part right there, that's why today you see there's so many abortion so-called clinics, because they are not clinics. You understand? Those are slaughterhouses. It is Lachpan, where they are killing our sons and daughters. So a lot of these nurses... Ne, They've retired from their jobs. Now they've opened these abortion slaughterhouses, these slag paniche. They are making money over young girls. That's what they are doing. You understand? Read. 
a medicine induced abortion can be performed by any medical doctor at his or her premises premises up to seven weeks from the first day of the last menstrual period. Mm -hmm. Come on. The usual method is a dose of an anti progestin followed by a dose of prostaglandin analog two days later. So now let's see, let's see. Yeah, that's that medical stuff. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's go back. There's something I want out of this. You see, there's the eagle right there on top. Where a colony? You see on top of the eagle? Hmm? You see on top of the eagle, the seven heads, the seven heads of the dragon. The same pointed, the, the same, the same, uh, the same crown that is worn by that Statue of Liberty that is in the US in the Hudson River. That's the same one right here. Okay. And there you see those people that are greeting one another. Those are the Khoisans, mm -hmm. the true owners of this land. Let's keep going. Mm, let me see. Yes, this is the part I want to deal with. Read that before the enactment. Let's read some history because you see, as a people, we don't read nothing. Read that. History. Before the enactment of the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, abortion was governed by the Abortion and Sterilization Act of 1975. You see that thing? It says before this, abo it says it was abortion was governed by Abortion and Sterilization Act 1975. So that means during the apartheid era, this is what they had. Sterilization and abortion was, they also, they had an act for it. But I want to show you something. Keep going. Which only allowed abortions when the women's mental or physical health was seriously threatened. Mm -hmm. Feelings again, right? There was a likelihood that the child would be born with severe handicap. How the hell do they know that? Keep going. Or the pregnancy was the result of rape or incest. And guess what? The rape or incest, this is 0.5%. These cases that are mentioning here, rape or incest, 0.5%. You understand? Keep going. Or the pregnancy was the result of rape or incest. Mm -hmm. It required the approval of two doctors, independent of the one performing the abortion. And in some cases, also of a psychiatrist or a magistrate. So there was a, there was a lot of um, checks and balances that had to be made. You understand? But they still did it anyway. Keep going. Right now, this is the part I want to focus on. Read that. The Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act was introduced in the first post-apartheid parliament. What is the post-apartheid parliament? It says the choice on... Because we just read the actual act of the choice on termination of pregnancy, abortion in South Africa, where women of any age, if they feel they can have it, and guess what? They don't even... If they are married, they don't even have to tell their husbands. You understand? Now, let's click that. Read that. This is the post-apartheid okay, era. Let's read it. General elections. Read that. General elections were held in South Africa between 26 and 29 April to 1994. Mm -hmm. The elections were the first in which the citizens of all races were allowed to take part and were therefore also the first held with universal suffrage. So now because of the apartheid uh, situation, right? Now, um, yeah, that's when the ANC won. Okay, 1994, Mandela was the president. Okay, so that's what this is going into. Go back now. Let's read that again, the paragraph. The choice on termination. The choice on termination of pregnancy act was introduced in the first post-apartheid parliament. That's during the, when Mandela took the throne. He took the parliamentary, he was the president. Okay, go ahead. It implemented the statement in the governing African National Congress. Mm, policy the framework. ANC, whoa, 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 whoa. The ANC, because sometimes we don't understand what this means. 
African National Congress policy framework. So this Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act was the ANC's policy framework. So the ANC is the one that brought this law into pass. Just think about that. Let that sink in. Because you see, with give me that in Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Because Christ said something similar. It says, listen, let this sink in into your spirit so you can understand what, what we just read. Okay? Because we don't get it. Read it. Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Listen to what Luke, Christ said. Come on. Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Mm -hmm. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. You see what Christ is saying? Let these sayings sink down into your ears. Let it sink into your spirit. You understand? Read that. Go back to the article. It implemented the statement. It implemented the statement in the governing African National Congress policy framework mm -hmm. that every woman must have the right to choose whether or not to have an early termination of pregnancy according to their own beliefs. You see that thing? That's the ANC right there. That's the ANC right there. And when they did this, that's why a lot of black women, they voted for the ANC because of this stuff right here. Because they were giving them license to kill. You understand? And that's why today they are still doing it. And yet, they are complaining that, no, our, our, our daughters, they are having sex. We don't know what to do. No, no, no. You know exactly what you've done. And they know what they are doing. Because here's another question. The condoms. Let me show you how the process works. Okay? Because they gave off our kids, they give our kids the condoms, right? So now, remember, now they, they, not only that, but they are introducing what? They are introducing the injection, like prevention. You understand? The patch, the pills. Because some take, they take the pills, some take the injection, some take the patch, right? So the patch is the second layer. So if the condom doesn't work, because when you introduce the patch or the injection, what are you saying to the condom? No, you don't really have to use it. Because even if you, you, if you use it, the condom breaks, or you choose not to use it, don't worry. We have a second solution. You can just use the patch. You don't have to use the condom anymore. You can just use the patch, which will prevent pregnancy. So now you're having sex without protection, which you're not supposed to be having sex at all if you're not married. Then they say, okay, if the patch or the injection does not work, don't worry, we've got something for you. Abortion is waiting for you. You see how this works? That's how this works. That's how it was set up. You understand? Give me that in Isaiah 32. Hmm. Give me Isaiah chapter 32 real quick. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 7. Read Isaiah 32 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 7. Go ahead. The instruments also of the churl are evil. The instruments, what is the an instrument? Is a, it says the instruments also of the churl. The churl talk about what? The root. The root. Who's the root? That's talk about the white man. He's talking about him. He says the white man's instruments, they are evil. Condom is evil. The patch is evil. Abortion is evil. Guess who's flocking to do those things? The black woman. You understand? So it says the instruments of the churl are evil. The white man, he's the chair. What is this instrument? The things that we just mentioned. Keep going. He deviseth wicked devices to mm. destroy the poor with lying words. You see that thing? Even he says this, hold on. He says this white man, he, devise, he, devises, he devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. Condoms, that's a lying word. The patch is a lying word. The abortion is a lying word because it gives our people license to sin, commit adultery, commit idolatry, you understand, and commit murder. That's what those things are set up to do. You understand? Keep going. Even when the what? Even when the needy speaketh right. Even when the needy speaketh right. I mean, right now we're speaking right this it's not all parents that are for this most parents they're against this they speak right but guess what it's in the law 
You understand? There's nothing you can do. But the, as long if the law of the land contradicts the Bible, we don't follow the, that law of the land. We follow the Bible. Because the law of the land says men and men can have sex, they can get married. And that's not even a marriage. No, but the Bible says that's an abomination. So no, no, we don't support that. You understand? Give me the book of Jeremiah 7. Give me Jeremiah 7 real quick. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 8. Go ahead. Behold, ye trust in lying words that can that cannot profit. You see, our people, the we we our people, our people, they trust in lying words. You understand? The, the, the politicians, they speak lying words. The pastors, they speak lying words. You understand? Okay. These condoms, these are just lying words. These are lying instruments. You understand? The patch, abortion, because they give you the reasons why you must have it. No, but you are poor. You understand? No, but, you know, you are, you are in distress. No, but, you know, the way you feel is not according to your beliefs to have a baby right now. Listen, those are lying words. And our people, they trust in that. That cannot profit. What has these abortions have profited our people? Nothing. What has politics profited our people? Nothing. What is this Christianity has profited our people? Nothing. Read verse 9. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Steal. Will you what? Will ye steal? Will ye steal our people? They steal. Look at during the time when they were looting, they were destroying the, the shops, they were destroying property, setting things on fire. Now they have no jobs. Now they don't know where to go and buy their food because they destroy the stuff. They steal, go ahead. Will you steal murder? Murder, abortion. We're just going over it. Will you steal, will you murder, commit abortion, go ahead. And commit adultery. And commit adultery because that's the root cause of these abortions, right? And swear falsely. And swear falsely, meaning you lie. You say, I love the Lord, but you don't love the Lord. Okay, come on. And burn incense unto Baal. Because these idols that you're worshipping, that you are sacrificing your sons and daughters to, shedding innocent blood. Read. And walk after other gods whom ye know not. Because our people walking after other gods whom they don't know. Read. And come and stand before me in this house. Then you come to the church. You go to the church before you see as if you are standing before the Lord. Read which is called by my name mm -hmm. and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. You see that thing? It says we are delivered to do all these abominations because our people are doing abominations that we read in verse 8 and 9. Read on. Verse 11. Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Mm -hmm. Behold, even I have seen it, have seen it, saith the Lord. You see, the Lord says, I'm looking, I'm, I see all of these things going on. You understand? Now, go back to the article. Okay, I'm almost done with this. Um, yeah, read, read that part again. It says, it implemented. It implemented the statements in the governing Af African National Congress policy framework that every woman must have the right to choose whether or not to have an early termination of pregnancy according to their own beliefs. It's not even an early te termination because now they say more, more than six months, you can do it. Now there's full term abortions now. When you are nine months pregnant, the law says you can even have an abortion at that point. You can't make this stuff up. Keep going. Although it was requested that parliament members be allowed to vote according to their personal beliefs. Mm -hmm. The ruling party. The what? The ruling party. That's the ANC. It says, although it was requested that, the, that parliament members be allowed to vote according to their personal beliefs, meaning what? The members of parliament were allowed to say, you know what? Me, I don't believe with this. I'm not, I'm not for that. I'm not going to vote for this thing. It says, but the ruling party, the ruling party, that he says what? It says the ruling party 
ruled that its own members may not vote against the act. So ANC said, no, no, you mustn't vote against it. They forced them. You see that thing right there? And guess what? This is, by the way, let's not forget, this is, they say, post-apartheid parliament. Who was the president during that time? Nelson Mandela was the president. The same one that he has, he has an idol that is set up there in Santim that people be taking pictures with. That's the same one that he, he disallowed those, because there were our mothers in there, our fathers in there that believed that they didn't believe in abortion. But the ruling party said, you can't vote against this act. You must, you must, you must make sure that it comes to pass. They did that. You see, our people are clueless. You are busy watching Isbaya. You have no idea what's going on. You understand? Go ahead. And the, and the act passed by 209 votes to 87. Mm. Five abstained, 99 were absent. Mm, how convenient. It, it, came t- it came into force on 1st February, 1997. So this is three years after Mandela was in office. He made sure that this went down. Nobody talks about this stuff. You understand? Nobody's talking about these things. But this is the same man that the people were saying, no freedom. No, 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 no. There was no freedom that was going on in 1994. No freedom. It was the illusion of it. But there was no freedom that went down. Second Kings, chapter 16, verse 4. Let me go back to my class now. Read that. And he, sank, and he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Now, this is Ahaz. Okay, give me 2 Kings 15, verse 37. 2 Kings 15, verse 37. 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 37. Mm-hmm. In those days, the Lord began to send against Judah, Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalai. Because what was Ahaz doing? Ahaz was doing these evil things, you understand? So the Lord said uh, he's going to send against Judah, Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalai. You understand? The king of Israel. That's what the Lord did. Give me 2 Kings 16 verse 5 now. Watch this. 2 Kings chapter 16 verse 5. Read. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Ramalai, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war mm-hmm. and defeated Ahaz, but could not overcome him. So now Rezin, this is the king of, this is the Syrian king, and Pekah, the king of Israel. They came up to Jerusalem to war because what Pekah, remember what, what Ahaz was involved in, but the Lord is saying to besiege Judah, it says, but could not overcome him. Now I want to deal with that, you understand, but could not overcome him. Give me the book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 1. They could not over... Now, this is a conspiracy right here going on. You understand? There's a conspiracy that Pekah and Rezin, they came together to go and overthrow Judah. But the Lord says, but they could not overcome him. Because during this time, you had the Syrians that was taking Northern Kingdom into slavery. But they did that in what? They did it in waves. They didn't do it all at once. It was in different waves. You understand? Read that. Second Kings, no, no, Hosea 1 verse 1. Read that. Hosea chapter 1 verse 1. Read. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Biri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotam, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, King of Israel. So now you notice that Hosea was prophesying during the time of Ahaz. You understand? He was prophesying during that time. And Hosea is northern kingdom. Keep going. Verse 2. Come on. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So now the Lord is telling Hosea, say, listen, go and marry one of these women that are, that are the, the women, northern kingdom women, you understand? Take from the own, your own people 
You understand? Because the women was involved in whoredom, meaning was spiritual fornication, idolatry. That's what this is going into. Go ahead. So he went and took Goma, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. Read. And the Lord said unto him, call his name Jezreel. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, mm -hmm. and will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. So now the Lord is saying, listen, uh, get a wife. You know, he, he got a wife and then the, they, they had a son, Jezreel. So because the name of the son was a sign of what the Lord was going to do against Northern Kingdom. Remember, Northern Kingdom, the king of Northern Kingdom at this time was who? Was Pekka. Pekka made a, a conspiracy with a Syrian king, Rezin, to go against Judah. Now the Lord is saying, listen, I'm gonna, this firstborn will be a sign that he says what? I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu because the Lord used Jehu to kill all the sons of Ahab. You understand? And will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. I mean, I'm gonna what? I'm gonna destroy Northern Kingdom. That's what the Lord is, is going into here. That's what Hosea is, is prophesying. So what we read in Second Kings that they shall not overcome him. This is a, this is part of this is part of it where Northern Kingdom was not going to overcome Judah. You understand? Go ahead. Verse five. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. The Lord says, I'm going to destroy Ephraim. Go ahead. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. Mm -hmm. And God said unto him, call her name Laruhama. Mm -hmm. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. You see what the Lord is saying? So Loruhama means I will have no mercy upon the house of Israel, meaning no mercy but will utterly take them away. Away where? Into captivity by the Assyrians. Tiklat Peleza, Shalmaneser, Sennacherib, you understand, Sargon, Esarhaddon didn't, Esarhaddon was the last king. But what I'm showing you here is that this is, this is the prophecy. This is what I, this Jose is prophesying that Judah will not be overcome despite the conspiracy that Pekah made with Rezin against Judah to overthrow it. You understand? Watch this. Keep going. Read verse 7. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God. You see what the Lord is saying? He says he will have mercy upon the house of Judah. At that point, who was the king? Ahaz was the king. The Lord says he will have mercy upon the house of Judah. Read. And will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Meaning Judah is not going to need to go to war for him to survive this. The Lord is, I'm going to handle this thing. Don't worry about it. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah now. Give me Isaiah 7 verse 1. Give me Isaiah chapter 7 verse 1. Because Hosea and Isaiah, they prophesy during the same time period. Okay. Isaiah 7 verse 1. Isaiah let's not, forget, verse 1. let's not forget the point because I know some of you might have forgotten. Go back to 2 Kings 16 now. Second Kings 16, verse 5 again. Chapter 16, verse 5. Read. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war, mm -hmm. and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. You said they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. So now, what we read in Hosea is the prophecy that we're reading about here. Because I, Hosea was prophesying during that time that, yes, there will be siege, uh, Ahaz, but they are not going to overcome him. Isaiah is going to prophesy the same thing that Hosea that we just read about. Watch this. Isaiah 7 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotim, the son of Uziah, the son Uzziah. of Uzziah. Mm -hmm. Come on. The son of Uzziah king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it. 
but could not prevail against it. That's the same thing we read in 2 Kings 16 verse 5, but you will not overcome him. That's the same thing, but could not prevail against it. The kingdom of Judah under Ahaz's reign. Go ahead. And it was told the house of David saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim and his heart is moved and his the heart, heart of was, his people. And his heart was moved, meaning he was scared. He was fearful. The spirit of fear jumped on Ahaz. He was a wimp. Read verse 2 again. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 2. And it was told the house of David saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved. Mm -hmm. And the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. You see that thing? So that fear spirit, that's why you brothers don't have no fear. We go to camp, don't be fearful. You are in here, don't be fearful. You're going through stuff, you are afraid. You are, not, you are afraid now to do the work of the Lord. Listen, no, 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 you are not built for this. The Lord is telling you right here, says, his heart was moved and the heart of his people as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. You see that thing? That fear spirit, it spreads like wildfire. Keep going. Verse 3. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, mm -hmm. Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Shirajashib. Shirajashib, that's Isaiah's son. Thou and Shirajashib, thy son, mm -hmm. at the end of the conduit of the conduit. upper pool at the end of the conduit at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field so he says now the lord is telling isaiah said go and meet ahaz you go with your son and meet this this meet this king you understand come on read and say unto him mm -hmm. take heed and be quiet fear not neither be faint hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebands, for the fierce anger of risen with Syria and the son of Remaliah. Heka. So now with that, the Lord, then now Isaiah is telling Ahaz, he said, listen, take heed and be quiet, meaning be quiet. Shut your mouth. Fear not. Don't be scared. Neither be faint-hearted. For the two tails of these smoking firebrands, meaning troublemakers, Peka and resin, for the fierce anger of resin with Syria, and the son of Ramaliah, which is Pekah. He says, don't be afraid. Because guess what? When, 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 when Ahaz was afraid, let, let me show you what he did. Give me the book of, give me 2 Kings 16, verse 7 and 8. When fear fell upon Ahaz, this is what he did right here. Watch this. 2 Kings Second chapter King. 16, verse 7. Read that. 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 7. So Ahaz sent messengers to tiglath pileser king of Assyria, saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria. You see and that out thing of the hand. Though because the fear fell upon him, that's why the Lord had to send Isaiah the prophet to go and encourage him and exhort him. Don't be scared. Because when fear jumped on him, this is what he did. He went to the king of Syria Assyria, not Syria, Assyria, Tiklath Peleza, to say, listen, I'm thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria, Rezi. Come on. And out of the hand of the king of Israel, which Pekha. rise up against me. You see that thing? So he decided, you know what? Let me go and ask for help from the Assyrian king to help me with Peka and Rezi. That's why Isaiah had to be sent to encourage him you understand? Because he was being simple as hell. Read verse 8. Verse 8. And Ahaz took silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord mm. and in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. You see what he was doing? He was stealing in the temple to go and pay him off so that he can protect him. You understand? That's what he was doing right here. You understand? Read. And the king of Assyria hearkened to him. No, no, the you know king... what? Mm, let me not jump ahead. Give me one second. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, keep going. You can read it. Read it. I second Kings chapter 16, verse 9. And the king of Assyria hearkened to him 
for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it and carried the people of it captive to Kerr and slew Rezin. He killed Rezin. But now, yeah, this is now later on. But I want to show you what Isaiah did. Keep going. And the king and King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to U Uriah. Uriah and sent, sent to Uriah the priest the fashion of the altar and the pattern of it according to all the workmanship thereof. So now after he was protected against Damascus, I mean against uh, Syria, meaning resin, by, by Tiglath Peleser, the Assyrian king, he went to meet him obviously to give thanks. You understand? But let's back up a little bit. Go back to Isaiah now. Isaiah 7 verse 4 again. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Because Syria, Ephraim, oh, verse 4, and say unto him, take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint-hearted. For the two tails of these smoking firebands, for the fierce anger of resin with Syria, and for this and of the son of Amalia. Come on. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Amalia have taken evil counsel against thee, saying. So now Syria and Ephraim and the son of Ramalia, because all Ephraim, northern kingdom, Ramalia, which is Pekka, he says, have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, read on. Saying, let us go up against Judah and vex it. And let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabeel. Tabeel. So what they are saying is that, listen, we're going to destroy Judah, and we're going to set up a king that we have put in there, Tabeel, the son of Tabeel. Read on. I need you to put some power in your reading. Come on. Verse 7. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. You see, he's repeating the same thing. He says, what? Thus said the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Meaning what? The conspiracy that Pekka and Rezin have against Judah to destroy it. The Lord says, it's not going to happen. They are not going to succeed. Go ahead. For the head of Syria is Damascus. The head of Syria and is Damascus. Hold on. The head of Syria is Damascus. Meaning the capital city of Syria is Damascus. Read. And the head of Damascus is resin. And the king of Damascus is resin. Go ahead. And within three score and five years, shall Ephraim, years within 65 years, what's going to happen? Shall Ephraim be broken, mm -hmm. that, it not, that it be not a people. So now the Lord through Isaiah is saying, listen, um, Ephraim is going to be broken. You understand? And Syria is also going to be destroyed. That's what Isaiah is telling, is telling Ahaz. He said, that's why in verse 4 it says, uh, it says, take heed and be quiet. Fear not. Don't be afraid of this. You understand? You're going to be all right. Watch this. Give me Hosea 1 verse 8. I want to show you what Isaiah is prophesying about here, that Judah will not be overthrown, is the same thing that Hosea said. Hosea chapter 1 verse 8. Hosea chapter 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now, when she had weaned Lerurama, she conceived and bare a son. Read. Hold on. Let me see. Remember, it says Call Ephraim his name. is good. Wait, 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 wait. It says Ephraim is going to be broken that it be not a people. Meaning what? The Lord is going to destroy Northern Kingdom by the Assyrians. Okay. Read that. Read verse 9 now. Hosea chapter 1 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then said God, call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. That's what the Lord says. He says what? He says, Ephraim shall be broken that it be not a people. That's the same thing that we just read in Isaiah. Isaiah is saying the same thing that Hosea is saying. So think about it today because, you know, we need to use some examples of today so we can understand. Today, we are living in the last days. These are the time of the Gentiles, right? 
Okay, America is the ruling empire on earth, the extension of ancient Rome. So you have Israel scattered all over. You have Israel scattered in Europe. You have Israelites scattered in Babylon. You have Israelites scattered in China, in South Africa, in Ghana, where so on and so forth, right? And guess what? We are prophesying about the destruction of Babylon. Whether we are prophesying here in South Africa and our brothers are prophesying in Europe, in England, they are prophesying in America, we are prophesying about the same thing in the same time period. That's the same thing going on here. Hosea and Isaiah, they are prophesying about the same thing in, during the same time period when this king, was, this Ahaz was the king. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, all praises. Now, give me, um, give me the book. Give me Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah now. Isaiah 7. Read Isaiah chapter 7 and verse, let me see, Isaiah 7 verse 9. Read it. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9. Come on. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. Mm -hmm. And the head of Samaria is Ramaliah's son. That's Pekka. If ye, if ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. So the capital city of Ephraim is Samaria. Okay, come on. Verse 10. Verse 10. Moreover, the Lord speak again unto Ahaz, saying, mm -hmm. Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in depth, in the depth, or in the height thereof, in the height above. So now the Lord now is speaking through Ahaz, is speaking to Ahaz through Isaiah. Say, so listen, um, ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. Meaning what? Pray to the Lord to give you a sign. Of the, of, the, of the, that what is the sign that I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make sure that resin and peka don't come against you to overthrow you because I will be there with you. You understand? He says, ask for a sign. Go ahead, verse 12. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. But he has said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. Okay, he says, I'm not going to ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. Watch this, come on. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, mm -hmm. is it a small thing for you to weary men? But you, will ye weary? But will ye weary my God also? You see that he says it is a small thing for you to weary men. But will you weary my God also? He says, ask for a sign. Watch this. Come on, verse fourteen. Verse fourteen. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. You see that thing? Now he's coming back. He said, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Go ahead. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and mm -hmm. shall call his name Emmanuel. Read verse 14 again. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So now the sign is a virgin shall conceive a bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So the son is the sign that will what? That will come from this woman. You understand? Watch this. Give me Matthew 123. Let's get the definition of the word Emmanuel. Let's understand what it means. Matthew chapter one. Okay, verse 23. Matthew chapter one, verse 23. Go ahead. Behold, a virgin shall be with child mm -hmm. and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Which is what? God with us. So Emmanuel means God with us. That's what Emmanuel means. Go back now to where he was at. Isaiah 7 verse 14 again. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Meaning shall call his name God with us. Now, why is the name, why is the, the meaning of the name so important when it says God with us? Jump up to verse 4 again. Read verse 4. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 4. Come on. And say unto him, 
take heed and be quiet. Mm-hmm. Fear not, neither be faint-hearted, for the two for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of risen with Syria, and the son of Remaliah. So now, what you are seeing here, the reason why it says God with us, this is the sign. The son will be born, and this son will be called Emmanuel to mean God with us. So now, the Lord is telling Ahaz through Isaiah, say, listen, I'm going to be with you. Don't be afraid of this. Don't be afraid of the conspiracy against Pekka and Rezin. I'm going to be with you. That's why it says, I'm going to give you a sign with the son whose name is going to be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Okay, give me Isaiah chapter 8, verse 1. Isaiah. Now, Isaiah is going to, is going to we, now we're going to understand the sign is going to be given, you understand, so that Judah will not be over, overthrown. So, because the, the, we read in 2 Kings 16, verse 5, that he will, but he will not overcome him. We are going over the prophecies to understand what he means when he says, but will not overcome him. Read that. Isaiah 8 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 1. Go ahead. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll, and write in it with the man's pain concerning Maher Sha'al Hashbaz. Concerning Maher Sha'al Hashbaz. Maher Sha'al Hashbaz. Read that again, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 1. Mm-hmm. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll and write in it with a pen with a man's pen concerning Mahe Sha'al Hashbaz. So now that's a long name. This is Isaiah's second born. Isaiah's first born, we read about it in Isaiah 7, verse 3, where is Shirjashab. That was Isaiah's son. The second son of Isaiah is Mahe Sha'al Hashbaz. You understand? Now, this is now remember. What we're reading here is, con- this, is a, this is a son that will be born from Isaiah. But I'm going to go into detail after that. Watch this. Let me share my screen. Okay, well, let's get the definition of what this name means, actually. Okay. Um, You're going to read. Uh, let me see where I'm at here. Yes, so we're going to read under um, the, Benson, the Benson commentary, Benson commentary, because they are going over that. Okay, so um, read from the beginning, uh, Isaiah 8 verse 1. This is the commentary of Isaiah 8 verse 1. Read that. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Read uh, which should I read, sir? The Benson commentary. Pay attention. The Benson commentary. Read that. Benson commentary. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 1. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Here begins the second section of this discourse, which reaches to the seventh verse of the next chapter, and is nearly of the same argument with the preceding being prophetical and containing matter both of comfort and reproof mm-hmm. Come on. it may be it may be divided into two parts the first part in the first four verses contains a confirmation and sign of the prediction concerning the sudden subversion of the kingdoms of syria of the kingdoms of syria and israel so now the sign and the, the sign, it goes into the sign that we read in Isaiah 7, 14. So Isaiah 8 verse 1 is going to go into the actual sign. We have already given the clue in Isaiah 7 verse 14 that the sign will be a child whose name is going to be Emmanuel to mean God with us. So God was going to be with Ahaz, you understand, because Pekah and Rezin had a conspiracy to overthrow him. Okay, come on. The second part more fully and distinctly explains the purpose of God with respect both of the Israelites and Jews. Meaning northern kingdom and southern kingdom. Come on. 
for the consolation of the pious. The, uh -huh. For the consolation of the pious and the terror of the impious and carnal among them. Great. Take thee a great role mm -hmm. or a great volume. The role is going to the Bible, the scroll. Go ahead. Because the prophecy to be written in it was large. Mm -hmm. And God would have written, would have would have it written in very large and legible characters. And write it in and write in it with a man's pen. Really? With such a pen, with such a pen as users you as writers use, that so all may read and understand it. Bishop Louth deriving the word. Yeah, whatever that means. Because there's some kind of Hebrews. There's nobody knows proper Hebrew. Is this is just um um is is the so-called Hebrew that was is 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 a so-called Hebrew that was constructed by Eliezer ben Yehuda. Okay, a Amalek. He used Yiddish, you understand, and some Assyrian Aramanian text to create what today is called a so-called Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew. So there's nobody that, that nobody has proper Hebrew today. We're only going to get it when the Lord returns, according to Zephaniah 3, verse 8. Go ahead. Here rendered rule from whatever to, sh to show, to reveal, rather than from to roll, translated mm -hmm. a large minor or a large polished. Mirror. A large mirror or polished tablet of metal, like those which were anciently used for mirrors, and okay, also and also for engraving on. That goes into the roll, which now the roll must be written on it. You understand? Because we had pens. So these things that they are talking about here is just garbage. So this is just bones right here. We're looking for the meat as we read down. Keep going. Read when it says, in this manner. In this manner, says he, the prophet was to record the prophecy of the destruction of Damascus and Samaria by the Assyrians. That's what we read in Second, Second Kings. Come on. The subject and some of which prophecy of which prophecy are here expressed with great brevity in four words. Mahe Shalal hash baz. That is to hasten the spoil, to take quickly the prey. So now Mahesha al hash baz means to hasten the spoil, to take quickly the prey. Quick to the plunder, swift to the spoil. That's what Mahesha al hash baz means. Okay, go back to Isaiah 8 and 1 now. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great robe and write in it with the man's pen concerning Mahe Sha'al Hashbaz. So, this, the concern, Mahe Sha'al Hashbaz, that's the sign of Isaiah's son to mean quick to the plunder, swift to the spoil. Meaning, the Lord is going to plunder Assyria and he's going to plunder um, Israel meaning northern kingdom, you understand? It says, quick to the plunder, okay? It says, quick to the plunder and swift to the spoil. And he's going to spoil Syria and Syria and Samaria. The Lord was going to quickly plunder them and what? And give them to the spoil to the king of Assyria. That's what Isaiah's son was going to be a sign of. That's the sign that God is going to be with you. Everybody understand that? Okay, come on. Yes, sir. Verse 2, read. Verse 2. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah, the son of Jeberachiah. Read. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, Call his name Maher Sha'al Ashbaz. So now, he says, see, Isaiah says, and I went unto the prophetess. Who's the prophetess? This is Isaiah's wife. 
He says, I went unto the prophetess and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, call his name Mahesha al hashbaz meaning what? Quick to the plunder, swift to the spoil. Meaning I'm going to what? Plunder, resin, and peka, and I'm going to give resin and peka to, the, to be a spoil to Tiglath Peleza. You understand? And the next waves that the Syria, the Assyrians will come against Northern Kingdom to take them all into slavery. And Judah will not be overthrown at this point. You understand? That's what this is going into. That's the sign right there. You understand? Read on. Verse 4. Verse 4. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. You see that thing? It says, before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father and my mother, meaning that before the, the child can have sense. You understand? It says, this is what the Lord says he's going to do. He says, the riches of Damascus, that's resin, and the spoil of Samaria, that's Pekka, shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. The Lord says, I'm going to send Assyria against you. You understand? Now give me Isaiah 7 verse 15 again. Now give me Isaiah 7 verse 15. Because what Isaiah is prophesying here in Isaiah 7 is the same thing that he's saying in Isaiah 8. Because this is one long letter. He's just repeating things that he said a four times. Read that. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 15. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. So now the son, Emmanuel, this is Isaiah's son. You understand, meaning God with us. How was God going to be with us during this time? Is because Isaiah's second born will mean to destroy Damascus and Samaria and give them to the spoil to the hands of Assyria, the, to the hand of the Assyrian king. So it says, Bara and honey shall he eat, that he may know to choose to refuse the evil and choose the good. Before he can before he can know to have sense. Go ahead, verse 16. Verse 16, for before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Because at this point, the northern kingdom was going to go into slavery completely. And then after that, Nebuchadnezzar will come take Judah into slavery. Now everybody will be in captivity. That's what this is going into here at this, in, 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 during this time period. So go back to Isaiah 8, verse 4 again. Isaiah 7, verse 15 and 16 is a precept to Isaiah 8, verse 4. So just put those together. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 4. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. Go ahead. The Lord shall also, the Lord speak also unto me, saying, The Lord speak also again unto me again, saying, mm -hmm. For as much as this people refuseth the waters of Shiloh that go softly and rejoice in resin and Ramaliah's son. Peka, meaning northern kingdom, is as for as much as northern kingdom refuses the waters of Shiloh. Um, that go softly and rejoice in resin and Ramalaya's son, Pekka. You understand? These two smoking fire brands, these troublemakers, right? This is what the Lord says he will do. Watch this. You know what? Hmm. Give me 2 Kings 16 verse 9. We coming back here. Just to understand verse Isaiah 8 verse 6, what it means. 2 Kings 16 verse 9. Let's read that. 2 Kings chapter 16 verse 9. And the king of Assyria hearkened unto him. For the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it and carried the people of it captive to Ker and slew Rezin. So now the Lord is saying, listen, I'm going to destroy Damascus. Now this is what we are seeing here, the destruction of Damascus. Okay, go back to Isaiah 8 now, verse 6 again. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 6. For as much as this people refuseth the waters of Shiloh that go softly and rejoice in resin and Ramalai's son. Read. 
Now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria and all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. You see that thing, what he's saying right there? He says, as the Assyrian king is going to come, he's going to destroy you, and he's going to conquer the nations that you are ruling over also. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Come on. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. no, verse 8. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He's, what did he say? And he shall pass through Judah. He says, he's going to pass through Judah. You understand? He's not going to touch Judah. He's not going to destroy Judah, but he's going to pass through Judah. Go ahead. And this, he shall overthrow, he shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. The neck of Judah, and, meaning what? He's going to reach to the neck of, he's going to touch Judah a little bit. That's uh, the Assyrian king. He's going to touch Judah a little bit. That's what he's saying. You understand? Even unto the neck. Remember, he's using Assyria as a similitude. He's comparing Assyria to a river that is overflowing. He says he's going to overflow and go over. He shall reach even unto the neck. It's like Judah is drowning, but the, the head is outside the water. So he's not drowning. You understand? Come on. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. O what? O Emmanuel. So you see what he's saying? It says, and what? And the stretching out of his wings, meaning what? The, the amount of area that he's going to conquer. That's what he's going into when he says, his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel, God with us. Because God was going to be with Judah when Pekah and, and, and Rezin come against Judah to try to overthrow it. You understand? Read. Verse 9. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, O ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. So now he's saying, he says, associate yourselves, because who was associating themselves with the Assyrians, with, uh, with Syria? Pekka. Pekka decided to form a league with our enemies to destroy Judah. That is the conspiracy. Remember, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 5 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 5. Go ahead. Moreover, the nations in their wicked conspiracy being confounded. You see that thing? The nations in their wicked conspiracy being confounded. Because now the Lord is confounding them. He's confounding Rezin. He's confounding Pekah. Because Pekah associated himself with Rezin, the king of Syria, to overthrow Judah. That's why the Lord says, associate yourself and you are going to be broken in pieces. Get yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Go ahead, verse 10. No, go back, Isaiah, Isaiah 8, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, mm -hmm. for God is with us. You see that thing? For God is with us. Oh, Emmanuel. That's the same thing. For God is with us. So that's the sign. So Isaiah's second son was the sign that we, we, Judah will not be overthrown. You understand? That was the sign right there. Read it again, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand. For mm -hmm. God is with us. For God is with us, meaning Emmanuel. That's the sign right there that the Lord is going to protect Judah. Now go back to 2 Kings now. 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 5. 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 5. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war. Mm -hmm. And they besieged Ahaz, 
but could not overcome him. So because this was the prophecy, but could not overcome him, what? Because Hosea prophesied about it, Isaiah prophesied about it. You understand? That Isaiah's sons were going to be used as signs that Judah will not be overthrown. You understand? So they are going to be confounded because of what? Because of the conspiracy theory, the conspiracy they had amongst them to overthrow Judah. So because Pekah was following Rezin, this heathen king to overthrow Judah. So he created a bridge with him and this heathen king to overthrow his own. That's what we're reading here. Because Pekah was following the mindset of this heathen king. He was what? He, his mind, he was heathen-minded. That was the problem with Pekah. Watch this now. Give me, go back to Wisdom of Solomon, okay? Wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 5 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 5. Read. Moreover, the nations in their wicked conspiracy being confounded. Mm -hmm. She found out the righteous and preserved him blameless unto God. Mm -hmm. She kept him strong against his tender compassion toward his son. You see that thing? Now this goes into what? It also goes into that Ahaz the king was preserved because of the wicked conspiracy of the heathen king Rezin and our, our, the, the northern kingdom king Pekah. You understand? So now watch this. Give me the book of Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 32. Ezekiel 20 verse 32. Because what I'm showing you is that whenever there's a conspiracy going on, the heathens are always involved because they are the ones that bring this wicked conspiracy among us. You understand? Because our people are filled with covetousness, idolatry, idolatry, the fame of the world, the lust of the flesh and so forth. They fall for that thing. You understand? Now let's read that. Ezekiel 20 verse 32. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 32. Mm -hmm. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all. As ye say, we will be as the heathen and as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. You see what our people were saying? They're saying we will be as the heathen, you understand? To as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. We're going to be heathen minded. That's what our forefathers were saying to Ezekiel. You understand? Watch this. Give me 2nd Ezra 2 verse 33. 2nd Ezra chapter 2 verse 33. 2nd Ezra chapter 2 verse 33. Read. I, Esdras, received a charge of the Lord upon the Mount Oreb that I should go into, unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they mm -hmm. set me at naught and despised the commandments of the Lord. Because uh, Ezra was sent to teach the people to bring them the laws of God. But he says, they set me at naught and despised the commandment of the Lord. Meaning they didn't want to hear him. You understand? Next verse. Watch this. This is what he said now. Read. Verse 34. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen. O ye what? O ye heathen. You see what he called them? O ye heathen, because they were heathen-minded. O ye heathens. Go, go ahead. That hear and understand. Mm -hmm. Look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest. Let's talk about for Christ. He, He's the, he, the shepherd is Christ. He says, look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest. Go ahead. For, for he is nigh at hand. Mm -hmm. That shall come in the end of the world. That shall come in the end of the world, meaning what? We are in the end of the world right now. This is literally the last days. You see the things going on in the earth? And Esau is the last ruling empire on earth. This kingdom is on its way out, and they know it. You understand? So now, watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 45 and 17. Sarag 45 verse 17. Watch this. Now, what I'm showing you is that Pekah was heathen-minded. Just like our forefathers during the time of the Persians, they were heathen-minded. You understand? So now, what we're going over here is 
during the time when we were in the wilderness. So Ecclesiastes, Sirach is rehashing that history that happened in the wilderness. Watch this. Sirach 45 verse 17. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 45 verse 17. Mm -hmm. He gave unto him his commandments and authority in the statutes of judgment that he should teach Jacob the testimonies and inform Israel in his laws. So now this is going into this is going into uh, Aaron and Moses. It says he gave unto him his commandment and authority in the statutes of judgment. And this is what Negroes don't like. Negroes, darkies, they don't like authority. They hate law and order and structure. So you understand? That he should teach Jacob the testimonies and inform Israel in his laws. You see this thing right here? Now, verse 17 is, the, is setting the tone. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 18. Strangers conspired together against him. You see that part right there? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. It says strangers. Notice who he's calling those that conspired against him. It says strangers. You understand? Because Moses consecrated and anointed Aaron. You understand that? So they were, was, they, the two was working together. But, but Moses was the man in charge. Aaron was helping uh, Moses. But you see, it says strangers conspired together against him. So now, now these strangers, is not talking about the other nations. It's talking about our people. But it, the Lord is calling them strangers because mentally they were heathen minded. The same way we read in Ezekiel 20 verse 32. Read verse 18 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 45 verse 18. Strangers conspired together against him and maligned him in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Even the men that were of Athens and everyone's side. Mm. Even the men that were of Datan and everyone's side. And the congregation of Kor mm -hmm. with fury and wrath. You see that thing right there? This right here is Numbers chapter 16. What I'm trying to show you is that Dathan, Korah, Ab and Abiram, they had a congregation within a congregation. You see what was going on? They had a congregation within a congregation. And the Lord is calling them strangers because the Lord did not consider them Israel anymore by the way they were moving, the way they were conducting themselves. They were no longer Israel like that. That's what we're reading right here. You understand? Read, that, read verse 18 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 45, verse 18. Strangers conspired together against him and maligned him in the wilderness, even the men that were of Dathans and everyone's side, and the congregation of Korah, and with fury and wrath. You see, Abiram, you see, Dathan, Korah, and Abiram, they had fury and wrath against Moses and Aaron. Because Moses and Aaron were put in the position of what? Authority. And they hated that because that, what were they teaching? What were they doing? They were teaching Jacob the testimonies and Israel the laws. So they were teaching the tribes the laws of the Most High God, how to sacrifice and so forth also. You understand? But they were filled with wrath and, and fury. Watch this. Verse 19. You know what? Verse 19. Oh, wait, wait. Before we go to verse 19, give me Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. Numbers 16, verse 1. We're going to read down to verse 3. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now Korah, the son of Ezra, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and on the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. So they took men. Remember, it says the congregation of Korah. So there was a congregation within the congregation of Moses. They had another congregation in the congregation. Go ahead. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, mm -hmm. famous in the congregation, Men of renown. You see, these were not unknown men in the congregation. They were known. That's why he says, he says what? 
uh, are, he's making it a point to emphasize, he says, famous in the congregation, men of renown, meaning they are known. You understand? Read on, verse 3. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and mm. against Aaron. Come on. And said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, mm. every one of them, and the you Lord is thing? among them. How did they, whoa, 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 whoa. how did they know? Because you never ask the question, how did they know? Because here he say, it says, and said unto them, they saying to Moses and Aaron, you take too much upon you. What are they saying you take too much upon? You, you think you know better than us. That's what they are saying to Moses and Aaron and said unto them, you take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Every one of them. How do they know that? How do they know? How did they know? I mean, really, you have to sit, sit there and really think about it. How the hell did they know that every, he says, even every one of them, how did they know? How did they know? I'm going to show you how they knew. Give me the book of Romans, okay? Give me Romans 16. I'm going to show you how they knew. These black ashy demons. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Watch this. This is how they knew. Oh, so they thought they knew everyone was holy. Now read that. Romans 16, verse 17. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, mark them, meaning point the Negroes out. He says, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. So me, what is he telling you? What is he saying? He's saying there's going to be men, men in the congregation that are known, that are going to do what? That are going to cause divisions. They are going to cause offenses against, going against the doctrine which you have learned. And the Lord says you must avoid them. And the only way to avoid, for, the, for you to avoid them, you need to know the scriptures so you can know, oh, no, no, that's an evil doctrine right there. And the way you point them out, he says, will you hear something that is going off? Point them out. Hey, brother, so-and-so says, can he, he says this, this, such, and that, and the other. Can he explain it to everyone? That's how you must do it. You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. They don't serve the but Lord. They, they are, hold on. They are not here for, the, for Christ. They are not here for the most high. Go ahead. But their own belly. They only care about themselves. Read. And by good words and good fair words, speeches. Good words and fair speeches. Good words and fair speeches. They're going to butter you up. You understand? Good words and fair speeches. What do they do? Deceive the hearts of the simple. They deceive the simple ones. These Negro, right, they are going to deceive the simple ones, the brothers that don't study, the brothers that are new. Those men, the Lord is saying, they are going to deceive those simple ones right there. The ones that, those ones that are still wet behind the ears. Yes, the Lord says, they are the ones that are going to be deceived. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts, okay? I'm trying to show you that what the reason why in Sirach is calling Dathan, Abiren, Korah, I mean, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, he's calling them what? He's calling them strangers because they were moving in the same spirit that Pekah was moving in. Pekah was moving, Pekah was moving in the spirit of resin. He was heathen-minded. He was not about the nation. He was heathen-minded. He was a heathen-minded Israelite. You understand? So watch this. Give me the book of Acts chapter 20. Hmm. Acts chapter 20 and verse, verse 29. Let's read that. Acts chapter 20, verse 29. Mm -hmm. For I know this, that after my departing, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Now the key, you see that part right there when it says, shall grievous wolves. 
wolves. Wolf in sheep's clothing. Because Christ, he spoke about this. Remember, these men, they also come with the Bible. Let's go to Matthew 7. Their fringes and a bottle of blue. Mm -hmm. They keep the Sabbath. Watch this. Matthew 7. Give me Matthew chapter 7. Okay. Let me see what verse I want. Yes. Give me Matthew chapter 7 and verse... Read verse 15. Matthew 7 verse 15. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You see that thing? It says, beware of what false prophets, meaning what? These are not the prophets of the Lord, because remember, they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. You, you see that part right there? So what we're reading here is, it says what? Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. They want to destroy and devour you. They don't care about you in this truth. They only care about themselves and what? They only care about how they think. They only care about how deep they think they are. That's the same. These are the same Negroes that was back then during the time of the apostles. They were going to different churches, coming with evil demonic doctrines to draw away disciples after them. Go back to Acts now, 20. Acts chapter 20, verse 29. Watch this. Acts chapter 20, verse 29. Go ahead. For I know this, that after my departing, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. The key right there, because in Matthew 7, it says they are ravening inwardly, they are ravening wolves. Meaning what? Not sparing the flock. They are going to tear you in pieces. Go ahead. Meaning spiritually, they will destroy you. Read. Also of your own selves, so men arise. Of your own selves. The same men that we read about in, 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 in um, the same ones that we read about in, uh, in Numbers chapter 16, verse 3. Because we're still dealing with, how did they know? Because they would go to different members in the congregation to draw them out. That's how they thought they knew that everybody's good. Everybody's all good. Everybody's in the spirit. Everybody, everybody knows what you know, Moses. Everybody's on, the, everybody's on the same level. That's basically what Korah, Dathan, and Abiram are saying. But that was, a, that was a ploy because was everybody the same level, even, even though they painted the people to make it seem like everybody was on the same level? No, they wasn't because they were painting themselves as being above the same people they are telling no, we are all on the same level. You, you see that thing? That's how they move. Go ahead. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, mm -hmm. to draw away disciples after them. To draw away disciples after them. So in order for them to do that, they have to do what? They have to sit there in order for them to draw away disciples after they have to sit with them. You, you, you see that thing? They have to sit with you. They have to sit with you and butter you up. Watch this. Let me show you something. Hmm, let's go to Samuel. Okay. Let's go to Samuel. Now, this right here is this wicked Negro called Absalom. You see, Absalom was slick. He was a slick Negro. He was a slick nig. That's what Absalom was. He was a slick nig. Let me see something. Okay. Yep. Absalom was a slick nig. Hmm. Watch this. Give me one second. One second. Uh... Hold on a second. See me, I deal with highlighters. Yeah, give me a second. Yes, Second Samuel chapter fifteen. Give me Second Samuel chapter fifteen. We're gonna start at verse. We're gonna start at verse one. Second Samuel fifteen verse one. Watch this. 
Because the question is, how did the, how did Korah, Dathan, and Abiram know that everybody in the congregation was good? How did they know that we are all one? We are the same. You understand? Disrespecting Moses and Aaron. Watch this. Second Samuel 15 verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 15 verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass after this that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. Go ahead. Watch this. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. Mm -hmm. And it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment. The king is King David. The king here is King David. So Absalom, he gathered men. He went to the king. The king, I mean, he went to the gate. The gate is where people come in. You understand? I mean, that's where the leaders of Israel are. And then they're going to pass the leaders. They're going to go and see the king for judgment. You understand? Absalom was there at the gate to make sure that everybody that is coming in to go seek judgment so that King David can, you know, deal with matters and all of that. He talked to them. Okay, read. Then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? Okay, well, said, okay, yeah, keep going. Thy servant. Read. Then, then, Abs then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. One of the tribes. Read on. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right, mm. but there is no man deputed of the king deputed. to hear thee. He says, there is no man deputed, meaning there is no second man of the king to hear you. Meaning you need to hear somebody else. You need somebody else to hear you other than the king. That's what Absalom is saying. He says, listen, yeah, you know, because he says that somebody that has, that he says what? That when any man that had a controversy meaning they had a problem. Now Absalom is saying, you know what? You are right in the things that you are coming to raise. You say your matters are good and right. So he's pumping them up. Go ahead. Absalom said moreover, oh, that I were made a judge in the land. Hold on a second. You see what Absalom's problem was? Covetousness. He coveted position. It says, Absalom said moreover, oh, that I will may judge in the land. If I was the king, this is what he's saying. If I was a leader in Israel, this is what, don't know everybody, I will take care of you. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. That every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me mm. and I would do him justice. So what is he implying? He's implying that King David is not judging correctly. So what is he doing? He's trying to under what? He's trying to undermine the king. But he's not going to the king directly. He's going to the servants of the king. He's going to the congregation to undermine the leadership. That's how they move. You understand that? I need you men to wake up. You understand? I don't need no simps around me. Because you see what's going on here? He's not going to go to leadership. No, 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 no. He's going to go to the other brothers in the congregation to try to butter them up. You understand? That's what Absalom was doing. Trying to under overthrow King David. You understand? Read. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, to bow down put, to him, he put forth his hand mm. and took him and kissed mm. him. You see what Abs he was. You see what he was? he was seducing the people. He was kissing their hand. Now let's get that in Sirach. You see, Sirach has everything. Watch this. Give me Sirach twenty nine real quick. Ecclesiasticus twenty nine. I'm gonna show you something. Sirach twenty nine and verse. It says, uh, read verse 4. Sarag 29, verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 29, verse 4. Read. Many, when a thing was lent them, 
reckon it to be found. No, no, that's not the one. Read verse 5. Yeah, that's the one I want. Read verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5. Till he hath received, he will kiss a man's hand. You see that thing? B says, till he received, he will kiss a man's hand. Before he receives the support of the people, he's going to kiss them. He's, he's, he's going to batter them. That's what Absalom was doing. So let's go back. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 5 again. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 5. Read. Right. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he would put forth his hand and he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. Read. Right. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. Mm. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. He, the simps. These are simps now. It says, so Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. You see what he was doing? He stole their hearts. The key word being what? Stole. 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 Meaning what? De it was through deceit. So don't think when he says, no, he's stealing the house of, no, no, it's through deceit. That's why he's using the word stole there. Steal it. Thou shalt not steal. But that's what Absalom was doing. He was stealing the house of the men of Israel. These men were simps. These were simps. Okay. Now, watch this. Jump down. No, keep going. Read verse 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass after 40 years. That Absalom... ah, whoa, 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 I want you really to see how, uh, how, how Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, this is how they think. They are very patient. You understand? Read verse 7 so we can get it. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass after 40 years mm. that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. You see how long he waited? 40 years. So Absalom was waiting 40 years. He was planning this thing for 40 years. He was planning to do this. So could you imagine for 40 years, instead of getting your mind right, this is what you are planning to do. So as we grow and grow and grow, you are planning to steal the hearts of the people so they can follow you. you re and I'm showing you really the depths of Satan there. These are the depths of Satan. 40 years he waited. Now, jump down to verse 11. You know what? Hold on. Wait a second. Hold on a second. Read verse 10. Read verse 9. Read, jump down to verse 9. Let's jump down to verse 9. Because remember, he said, I want to go and pay my vow, which I vowed unto the Lord in Hebron, which is Jerusalem. Jump down to verse 10 now. No, no, verse 9. Read verse 9. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 9. Go ahead. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So mm -hmm. he arose and went to Hebron. So he told King David, he said, with King David said, Okay, go in peace. So he went back to Hebron. Now watch this. Read on. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel. So you see how he knew? Spies. First, he was dealing with the people. He was, he was playing middleman. Before the people got to the king, he spoke to them first. You, you see that thing? So he sent for over and above that, he sent forth spies. Because now he's got a following because hence the spies, because you're not going to spy if you're not, now, you're not now a follower. You are a follower. And remember, Absalom was a prince. So he wasn't satisfied with the being a prince, being the king, the son's king. He wasn't satisfied with that. You understand? Read. Saying, as soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. You see what he's doing now? As soon as you hear the trumpet, now you, you see what? It says, then he shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. 
He just lied to his father. He said, I'm going to pay a vow. But he did not go to do that. He went over there to, uh, to make himself king. Because that's what he wanted. He was coveting his father's position. You understand? Now watch this. Read verse 11. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. And with Absalom went 200 men out of Jerusalem. 200 men. Hold on. He took 200 men with him. 200. You understand? He took 200 men. 200 men followed behind Absalom. Go ahead. That, that were called. Mm -hmm. And they went in their simplicity. Stop right there. So these were simps. You see, you see that thing? Absalom was a simp and he took simps with him. Because it says, and they went in their simplicity. These were simps that was following Absalom. Go ahead. And they knew not anything. They didn't know the scriptures. They didn't know wisdom, judgment. They didn't know time. You see this thing? They were, they were just following him. Watch the next verse. Keep going. Verse 12. And Absalom sent forth, sent Ahithophel. Oh, ah, Ahithophel, mm -hmm. the Gilonite, David's counselor, from his city, even from Gilo. Gilo. Come on. Even from Gilo. While he offered sacrifices and the conspiracy was strong. You see that thing right there? And the conspiracy was strong. Is the Absalom sent forth Ahithophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor. So he even had David's counselor in his pocket. The man that counseled King David, he was in Absalom's pocket. He also was stolen. His mind was stolen by Absalom. You understand? And the conspiracy was strong because now, remember, this is David's counselor. He knows a lot about King David. So now he's now had a conspiracy with who? With David's son, Absalom. So he's feeding him all the things that he discusses with King David. You, you see this thing? That's why it says, and the conspiracy was strong. What made it strong? Because this was David. He was close man. This was, this was a man that was in the King David's cycle. He was David's counselor. You understand? Right. And the conspiracy was strong. For the people increased continually with Absalom. And the people increased continually with Absalom. Remember, these were simps that knew not anything. Go ahead. And there came a messenger to David saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. You see that thing? The man, he says, the what? The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. Meaning what? Now, he's no longer 200 men. He's more now. He's more than 200. But watch this. Keep going. Read verse 14. Verse 14. And David sent, said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom, make speed, make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly, and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. So David is gathering his men. He said, "We need to go get out of here." Okay, come on. And the king's servants said unto the king, "Behold, thy servants are ready to do. Thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord." The king shall appoint. You see, David had what? David had faithful men around him. That's what I want to show you right there. David had faithful men around him. He says, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever, my lord, the king shall appoint. You understand? Meaning Absalom did not get to all of us. The devil that jumped on Absalom did not jump on us as well. That's what they are telling King David. You understand? So... Going back to the, to the classes regarding leadership for dummies, part one, part two, especially part two, you can link it with this class right here. You understand? Because this, would, this must tell you something. If, you're not, if you don't examine yourself with this one right here, 
Well, I don't know what to do for you. You understand? This right here, this is some real stuff right here going on. You understand? So when you study the scriptures, don't just be reading. You must sink yourself in this book and say, you imagine yourself being there and seeing all these decisions that are being made. What our forefathers was doing. I mean, King David here is he's focusing on waking up Israel, gathering the people together and what? Making sure that he deals with the people justly and righteously according to the script. Here come a Negro right there in the corner, that nigga right there. 40 years he's waiting to draw away disciples after him. But the people that followed after him, he says they went in their simplicity and they knew not anything. These were simps. Simp activity was going on here. You understand? That is what was going on right here. Now, this is how he, how, go back to numbers now. Now we understand how Korah, Dathan and, how Korah, Dathan and Abiram knew. Because the question you were, because you must ask yourself, how the hell did they know? That's how they knew. What Absalom was doing, that's what they did. Numbers 16, verse 3. Read that. Numbers chapter 16, verse 3. Go ahead. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, mm. every one of them. Every and one the of them. Every one of them. That's what Absalom was doing. He was stealing the hearts of the men of Israel, the simps. Go ahead. Every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Mm. Where, wherefore then, lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. You see that thing? It says every one of them, everyone is holy. You understand? And the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Why are you making yourself above us? Everyone is the same. That's the mindset of a name. The simps, a simp think like this. These were all simps here. You understand? Now let's go back to Sarah 45. Sarah chapter 45. Okay. Verse 18 once again. Ecclesiastes chapter 45, verse 18. Strangers conspired together against him and maligned him in the wilderness, even the men that were of Datans and everyone's side, mm. and the congregation of Korah with fury and wrath. The congregation of Korah with fury and wrath. That's the same wrath that Absalom had. You understand? He hated the position that his father was in. I mean, like, really? Huh? Keep going. Verse 19. Verse 19. This the Lord saw, and they, it displeased whoa, whoa. him. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Because a lot of the times, you see, we are so deep into our wickedness, we don't think the Lord is seeing it. Because this, this mindset is the mindset of black people today. Whenever somebody is, is, is in the seat of authority to judge matters and all of that, you understand? Rolling in the spirit of the Lord. The, the nig always think, you know what? I can do it better. That's the mindset of a Negro. You know, I can do it better. I have this idea. You know, I wouldn't break it down like that. I will break it down like this. You know, that scripture right there, you see, he pulled that one. No, I have a better one. You see, here's a better precept. No, that one mm, yeah, is too simple. Here's a deep one. That's the mindset of a Nig. You see, duckies, they think like that. So, but what they don't understand is that because their sin is blinding them, they, they don't, they, it doesn't enter into their mind that the Lord is watching this whole thing. Read verse 19 again. Ecclesiastes 45 verse 19. This the Lord saw, and it, and it displeased him. The Lord was displeased with this. The Mosai saw it, and he was displeased. Go ahead. And it displeased him, and in his wrathful indignation were they consumed. Mm. He did wonders upon them to consume them with the fiery flame. The Mosai, he put them to death. Not after he put them to death, this is what the Lord did. Next verse, watch this. But he made Aaron more honorable. Stop right there. That, that's a beautiful thing right there. You see what the Lord does? This is what the Lord does. He says, but he made Aaron more honorable. 
You understand? Because the sons of Aaron, how did they make them honorable? They were dealing with the what? They were dealing with the sacrifice. They were handling the, they, they were dealing with the office of the priesthood. You understand? They were dealing with the office of the priesthood, showing Israel how to sacrifice. You understand? So a lot of the times, brothers, you brothers come in because let me address this. One thing I understand is that, you know, brothers is not, is many, some of you, you are on YouTube. I mean, I put it out. Some of you are on YouTube. You'll be watching other camps teaching on the streets. Okay, that's fine. The spirit that will jump on you is this. This is the spirit. You see the, everything we just read? This is the spirit that will jump on you. Because you know what you're going to think? You're not going to have the spirit to sit down and actually examine yourself, deal with your own issues, and get your mind right with the Lord. You're not going to do that. You know what you're going to do? You're going to focus on all those precepts that have been pulled when you're watching these YouTube, these YouTube videos. And then when you come in now, when you have to learn, when you have to sit down and study, make notes, when you have to, we have to go to camp and so forth, you're going to think that you know better than the people that came before you. I'm going to tell you, that's the spirit, that's Satan. Satan will jump on you. Because the reason why I'm bringing this out is because there's a spirit moving. It's not just one brother. No, no, it's a couple of brothers. This is the spirit that's running right now. Me, I can tell you this. I've seen this before, you see. And I've seen how, I saw how it ended. It didn't end well. The people that did that, they were watching YouTube videos. And in their minds, they were moving with the spirit of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. No, we are all one. Because they can watch a video on YouTube and come and say, no, we're going to challenge leadership now. Because we also have some precepts we want to call. You see, the Negroes don't look at the big picture. Negroes are not about, they are not about nation building. No, no, no. Vain glory. That's the mind of the Negro. The mind of the Negro is about that thing. Vain glory. They don't care about the nation. That's why I said they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. They only care about themselves. You understand? They don't care about the nation of Israel. And that's what happened when those, there was brothers up in here. They were moving in the same spirit. And the Lord did what? He did the same thing to them that he did in the wilderness to Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Because now they thought they were on some level. And the Lord said, okay, I'm going to put some fire. I'm going to put some fire and see, are you going to withstand the fire or are you going to bail out? Guess what? They bailed out. Give me Ezekiel chapter 13. No, give me Ezekiel 3 verse 17. I'm going to close it with this one. Watch this. Ezekiel 3 verse 17. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. Read what you got. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. You see that thing right there? This is a warning shot. The Lord is saying, you say, I've made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. May I care about the, the people. You understand? That's my focus. Building the brothers and the sisters as well. Not just the brothers, the sisters too. Because this is nation building time. You understand? So a watchman, that's what you're supposed to concern yourself with. Building the nation of Israel. Building yourself up with all the classes that come out every day when we have class. You're supposed to be building yourself up. You should not be having time strolling YouTube. You should be having time sitting down and actually studying your history. Blessed be he that read it. You have to sit down and read this book. You understand? It's not going to happen because by osmosis. No. That ain't going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's why the Lord, read that again, verse 17. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Read. Therefore, hear the word in my mouth and give them warning from me. You see that thing? Hear the word of the Lord and what? Hear the word. He says, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. A warning that means danger is, danger is in the midst. Beware. Chocomela. 
You see that thing? That's what the Lord is teaching us right here. I hope you brothers and sisters can take heed to this thing. You understand? Because, yeah, we went over Absalom. Absalom is the one that he was a man. But you know what? The spirit just jumped you on this thing. Give me the book of Nehemiah, because I mustn't forget the sisters, our lovely sisters. Okay? Give me Nehemiah chapter 6. Hmm. Watch this. Because when Nehemiah was building, there were our enemies that were disturbing our forefather Nehemiah from building the nation. You had, you had black ashy demons that were trying to stop the work. Mm -hmm. Give me Nehemiah 6 and 1. Watch this. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall mm. and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. He had not set up the doors upon the gates. Watch this, because he was building. He was, still in B. he was not done, but he was almost done. The only thing that was left was the doors upon the gates. Go ahead. That Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. So now, because they tried the first time, they didn't, didn't work. Now they are trying another tactic. He says, listen, come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. Let's go and meet somewhere. But Nehemiah knew that they wanted to do him mischief. Watch this. Look at our, look, look at our forefather's response. Read verse 3. Verse 3. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work. I'm what? I am doing a great work. I am doing a great work. I Meaning we've got work to do. We don't got time for BS. Keep going. I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. I'm not going to come down there and entertain your foolishness. Read. Why should the work cease? Why should the work stop? Why should I stop doing the work of the Most High? Come on. Whilst I leave it and come down to you. So should I stop doing the work of the Lord and come down and entertain your foolishness? That's what the Amaya is saying right there. You understand? Read on. Verse 4. Come on. Verse 4. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort. Four times they be trying this thing. Come on. And I answered them after the same manner. I mean, I answered them the same way. I don't have time for foolishness. Now, watch this. Jump down to verse... Hmm. Jump down to verse 14 now. You know what? Read verse 13, because Tobiah was hired, you understand? And son, uh, it says, for Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. They hired, some, they hired another Negro to come and, um, and seduce our forefather. You understand? Now, Shemaiah. Now, watch this. Um, read verse... Read verse 14. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 14. Mm -hmm. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works. Mm -hmm. And on the prophetess Noadiah. You see that thing? The women. Don't sleep on the women. Don't sleep on the sisters. He's saying what? He says this is Tobiah and Sanballat. You understand? And says to these their works, and on the prophetess Noah Dyer. Meaning what? The women also they play the role of Absalom. The women also will play the role of Absalom. They will play the role of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Yes, that's what we're reading here. The prophetess Noah Dyer. Keep going. And the rest of the prophets. Mm. That would have put me in fear. You see, Nehemiah, Nehemiah was, he, he already saw the plot, what they were trying to do, to stop the work. The whole objective is to stop the work. That's why the scribes and Pharisees were doing the same thing to Christ. Give me that in Luke 20. How can I forget that one? It's not part of my notes, so I'm going to use it anyway. Luke 20. Mm. 
Give me Luke chapter 20 and verse 19. Luke chapter 20 verse 19. Mm -hmm. And the chief priests and the scribes, the same hour, sought to lay hands on him. And they to feared the people. Sought to lay hands on him. They sought to lay hands on him. They wanted to do what? They wanted to destroy Christ. Keep going. And they feared the people. For they perceived that he had spoken this parable against him. You see that thing? That's the same. You see, when it says a parable against them, because they were, they, they, they were guilty. So now, whenever he taught, they always thought, you know, he's, he's speaking against us. And whenever he taught and they did not understand what he was teaching, they always thought he was speaking against them. That's why he says, before they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. So they were not thinking about the nation. It was about themselves. That's the point. Next verse. Come on. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. And they watched him. You see that? And thing that they watched him. I mean, do you, do you understand the amount of time on your hands you have to have to be doing this? They watched him. Instead of doing the work, they are watching him. Instead of sitting down and studying, you are busy on YouTube, just trolling YouTube. That's what we're reading here. And they watched him. Go ahead. And they watched him and sent forth spies, and sent which should feign themselves just men. Do you see that thing? They sent forth spies. That not that what uh, Absalom was doing? Absalom was doing the same thing. Korah and Dathan and Abiram, that's what they was doing. Because how did they know that all the congregation is holy? Because they had to interview and spy on the people. You understand? Go ahead. Which should feed themselves just men, mm -hmm. that they might take hold of his words, mm. that, they so, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. You see, the whole reason why they were watching him is so they can take hold of his words, meaning use his words against them. That is what they were doing. They can take hold of his words so that they might what? That so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. Watch this. Give me Matthew 27 verse 18. Matthew 27 verse 18. Matthew chapter 27 verse 18. You know what? Read verse 17. Let's start. Read, read verse 17 down. Matthew chapter 27, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when they gathered together, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye, whom will ye that I release unto you? Mm -hmm. Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ. Who must I release out of prison? Because Barabbas was a murderer. Okay, come on. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Read that again. Read that thing again. Verse 18 and one more again. Matthew chapter 27 verse 18. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. So the reason why they delivered Christ, it was because they envied him. Instead of doing the work, they had the spirit of envy on them. Consuming envy, like we read in Wisdom of Solomon. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 6.23. It says, for envy, they delivered him. But this is what the Lord said about this spirit of envy. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. Come on. Neither will I go with consuming envy. Neither will I go with consuming envy. Envy is a consumptive spirit. It's a consuming spirit. It will consume your soul. It will destroy you from within. It will destroy your mind. That's why it says, neither will I go with consuming envy. The scribes and Pharisees, they were consumed with envy towards Christ. Absalom was consumed with envy towards his father, King David. Korah, the son, and Abiram, they were consumed with envy towards Moses and Aaron. So throughout history, we keep seeing the same spirits coming back. You understand? Come on. 
for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. Meaning wisdom of the Lord will not be with you. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? So go back to Matthew 27 verse 18 again. Matthew chapter 27 verse 18. Mm -hmm. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. He knew. So Pilate knew that they delivered Christ because they envied him. So envy, the spirit of envy consumed them so much so that they what? They condemn an innocent man to be put to death. Well, that's what we're reading here. You understand? So, I'm going to end that class right here. All praise to the Most High. Uh, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For laying his life down for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. Excuse me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 